time today to join us for the Plus Group webinar series. Today's topic is, do this one thing every week and earn $6 million. Wow. Today our presenter is Chris Carlson, the DI coach. Uh, please note that all lines will be muted during this presentation. If you would like to ask a question, please go to the question pane on your control panel and just type it in. We will address the questions at the end of the webinar. Also note that we are recording this webinar. Uh, you will be sent a link uh, by tomorrow which contains the actual audio and the presentation. Um, you are also able to view it on our website at www.plusgroupus.com. OK, I'm going to now turn this over to Mr. Chris Carlson. Thank you so much, Tracy. It's really a privilege to be invited by the PLUS group to spend some time with you this afternoon and or this morning if you happen to be in the Pacific time zone. And I know your time is valuable, so I really want to jump right into the program. Uh, people have asked me, "Is Chris, where did you come up with the title, The Six Million Dollar Producer? Well, I was talking to a good friend of mine uh, recently, Mike Coggle, and Mike is a uh, regional vice president for a leading uh, disability insurance carrier. And we were just talking about the incredible opportunity that exists today uh, for, for producers who want to uh, sell income protection products. And Mike was kind enough to run an income projection for me. And what we found out that if a producer did wrote just one application a week, and they were consistent in doing that over a 20-year period of time, is they would produce more than $6 million in commissions. And so that's where the title came uh, for this particular uh, presentation and what I want to do is I want to talk about three main things today is I want to talk about the uh, the opportunity that exists within the income protection marketplace I want to show you where the numbers come from to get to that six million dollar number then I want to discuss really briefly ten strategies that I know that can help you write one application uh, a week when it comes to income protection products um, for those of you who would like a copy of today's presentation and you would also like the, my report, 21 questions you need to ask about disability insurance, all you have to do is text your email address to 206-535-1809. Just text your email address to that number, and after the presentation today, you will get that. Is the, the report, 21 questions you need to ask about disability insurance, is something that I wrote, and it's designed to be able to share with your prospects and clients. There's not a copyright on it, so if you want to add, delete, or modify, please use it to your benefit. Uh, and maybe 21 is too many. Maybe you want 12 or 13, but just use it. And I think what it does, it, it, it helps put in layman's terms you know, what your prospects and clients need to be thinking about when it comes to income protection products. And I'll repeat that number at the end of the presentation if, by chance, uh, you type in the wrong number or you're waiting to see if you really want to do it. So let's talk a little bit about uh, why there's never been a better time to be selling disability insurance. I really think that, that we are in the perfect storm. It's a tremendous opportunity to be talking to your prospects and clients regarding the need to protect their income. And there's three reasons why it's a perfect storm. The first reason is there's unlimited prospects out there for you to be talking to. Literally, there are millions of prospects out there. The Council for Disability Awareness, and by the way, if you haven't been to their website, it's a, it's, it's a must-view website, Council of Disability Awareness. They tell us in all their research there are about 150 uh, Amer Americans that are working in our economy today. Only 50 million of them have some form of income protection. About 40 million of that 50, is, uh, is they're protected with uh, group LTD, and about an additional 10 are protected with individual, or 10 million have individual disability insurance. So you can slice and dice that as, as much as you want. You can roll that way, way back. At the end of the day, there are literally millions upon millions of people for you to be calling on. And the reason why it's happening is, a couple of things. Number one, employers are downsizing and right-sizing, so there's people out there who are starting their own businesses, and they're, they're leaving their group LTD behind, and once they get the business going, you know, the first thing, obviously, they're concerned about protecting their family with the medical insurance, and the second thing they're taking a look at is protecting their income. You know, that downsizing and right-sizing, and also because of the, the, the incredible leaps in technology are allowing people to become entrepreneurs and establish big businesses. Uh, and sometimes, you know, big 
businesses, and sometimes they, they remain small businesses. But nonetheless, these entrepreneurs need uh, benefits for themselves and possibly their employees, medical insurance, life insurance, retirement planning, and disability insurance. So the economy has helped create the un unlimited prospects that there are in the marketplace. No question with all of the, the, the legislation going on in, in group health care is employers are shifting you know, a lot of the, the premium burden to employees. And at the end of the day is you know, why there's unlimited prospects is these people are not being talked to. So they don't have the coverage. So there's a lot of people, millions upon millions of people that you can go talk to. The second reason why I think it's the perfect storm is the fact that there's no competition. You have unlimited prospects and then nobody's competing with you for these particular prospects. A couple of the reasons why, fewer career agencies you know, in the, ins the traditional insurance industry and as a result it's producing fewer agents and there's fewer managers and, and trainers who have traditionally been the cheerleaders, the people that are encouraging the producers to go out there and have the conversations about income protection with their prospects and clients less cheerleaders, less competition. A lot of veteran agents are, are, are at or near retirement. A lot of these veteran agents came up during the time where disability insurance was a hot topic and, and that many of these veteran agents were super producers. Well, they're now riding into the sunset, so now there's even less competition than there was in the past. Fewer companies are manufacturing you know, any type of disability insurance or income protection products, so as a result, they're not bringing their marketing power to the market, if you will. Is the big three, the Provident, Paul Revere, Unum is now one company, and they, they really are not emphasizing the individual products the way they did back in the 80s and early 90s when they literally had hundreds of people on the streets calling on you and encourage you to write disability insurance products all of which has really you know, resulted in agents shying away from writing income protection products and disability insurance products. The third reason why it's the perfect storm is because the products are so doggone good. You know, even if you're a veteran of this industry, the products, the non-can't own off, which so many people have fallen in love with, are just as good today as they were in the past. And, and, and the issue limits you know, are higher than they've ever been. So the opportunity to work with high wage earners and write additional coverage on top of their group LTD or possibly on top of their existing individual coverage affords you more opportunities to make sales. The carriers are pricing the product to attract the class of employees or the class of risk that they want. So the pricing is incredibly competitive for the benefit that your clients and prospects are being offered. And then finally, there's so many new products and riders that are available in the marketplace. You know, be it catastrophic riders or, or retirement uh, replacement products or products that will uh, re you know, help uh, pay the, the medical school uh, debt that a, a doctor might have incurred, uh, a, a product that would uh, guarantee a spouse uh, the, 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 the benefit from the, from the divorce decree to make sure that it's being paid even if the person uh, who's supposed to be paying that alimony is, is, becomes disabled. So there's so many opportunities with so many new products and riders that, that this perfect storm is just so, so great for you to take advantage of the opportunity. Now, I told you I wanted to talk about the numbers. And so let me give you an example. And this will show you that, it, it, assuming that a producer wrote one application a week, I'm a round numbers guy, so I rounded it down to 50. And in that producer, the average annual premium is $2,000 a year. And that's actually a little bit less of the average premium that's written in this country when it comes to disability insurance products. So what, what that would do is $100,000 of premium results in $50,000 of um, first year commissions, it results in about $36,000 of, of, of production bonuses and persistency bonuses for that producer. And so in that first year, a producer would make $86,000 in commissions for writing that $100,000. Now, if that individual stuck with it and did it, just did that, those same numbers every year for 20 years, as you can see, in year 20, is they would, that year 20, they write another $100,000. Their total compensation in year 20 would be $562,000 in just that one year. If we, if we add all those years together 
and they did those that two million dollars as you can see that over time that that revenue number to the producer would be almost six point seven million dollars now let me hit the pause button here's what I know I don't expect that everybody on this call is necessarily think that they want to do one application a week but if you apply your math to these numbers I think you'll agree with me that the ability to not only take care of our clients but for you to make money is just absolutely incredible and one of the things that's so good if you take a look at your particular practice one of the things that's so good about income protection products there's very little service work that's required because once you put it in force there's not constant claims there's not cash value that you have to worry about and it's rarely is it replaced so it's one of the most profitable products that you can write and as we said, when you have unlimited opportunities, there's low, no competition, and you make a lot of money, to me, that ultimately is, is the perfect storm. And so what I would recommend that you do, if, if, if these numbers intrigue you, is I'd recommend that sometime after this webinar that you reach out to your plus group office and say, hey, look, you know, can you run me a commission projection based upon me doing the following, whatever number is comfortable for you? And that maybe that'll serve as maybe your guiding light, something to keep you motivated you know, each and every week to go out there and talk to more and more people about income protection. So let me give you 10 steps that, that can help you write an application a week or whatever the right number is for you in your particular practice. The first step is you have to set a goal. And I don't care if your goal is one application a week, and maybe that's too low for some of you. Maybe your, your goal is two apps a month or one app a month. It really doesn't make any difference. But what we know, if you don't set a goal, you're probably not going to get there. So my challenge to everybody on this call today is, is to set a goal for the, for the number of disability insurance applications that you want to write this year. And just make sure that you're focused on that. And the chances are that if you set the goal and you're committed to the goal, is you're going to accomplish that goal, whatever it happens to be. The second step that you have to do is you have to have the activity. This is not going to happen miraculously. One of the things that I've seen over the years, the 30 years that I've been in this business, when I came into the business, most agents were having 15 to 20 selling appointments each and every week. Rarely do I talk to any advisor or agents who has anywhere near that many selling appointments today. And that makes it really, really difficult to sell products if you're not in front of people. So what is really critical is that you are out in front of people having conversations about the need to protect their income. Obviously, if you're talking to three or four or five or six or seven people a week you know, about their need to protect their income, no doubt that you can write an application a week. If, on the other hand, you're only in front of a few people a week and you're not talking to them about income protection, you're not going to sell near what you might want to do. Now look, I also understand that there are people that you work with you know, that are at or near retirement and disability insurance products might not be a fit. But for those of you who have a lot of clients and are targeting prospects that do depend on their income to support their lifestyle, then this is a conversation you need to have a, you know, to be able to hit these goals. So you have to have the activity. Step number three is you have to have a target market. Now, I, I got to step uh, back for a second when I said there's no competition. If by chance that you're working in the doctor and the dental market, you're going to have uh, competition when it comes to disability insurance products. But almost every other market out there, there's, there's, there's little or no competition. I'm often asked, is Chris, what market should I target if I really want to get serious about disability insurance? My advice, and it's my opinion, and I'm not here to say that it's the only market you should target, is but I would be targeting business owners for two main reasons. Number one is business owners have multiple needs. You know, many of them not only need disability insurance, but they need business overhead expense, disability buy sell, and business overhead expense. That's just in my disability world. They certainly have other needs when it comes to their entire financial situation. And not only do they do they personally have multiple needs, many times you're able to create multi-life situations because you're able to write multiple policies on multiple lives. So you really expand your ability to write more income protection products by going after the business owners. And one of the other things that's really good about the business owners is they're really in tune about managing risk. You know, they're working with property and casualty agents who are telling them about the concept of risk management. And really, what, you know, what you would be talking to them about is personal risk management. Step number four, and I have to tell you, 
if you take nothing away from my presentation, please listen to the next uh, 90 to 120 seconds because I think it is the absolute most important thing that I'm going to say to you today is that with all the noise that's in the marketplace, you know, people who are on Facebook or who are on Twitter or looking at their emails and there's, there's, there's a phone is ringing and, and, and they're watching TV and the newspapers and everything else that's out there, it's tough to get your position or your message across to your clients and your prospects. What you need to do is you need to establish yourself above the line of credibility. And what, what I mean by that is if you're able to have credibility with a prospect, more than likely your message is going to get through. If you come at them from below the line of credibility, your message, your marketing message, your attempt to reach out to them in all probability is going to get lost in all that other noise that's out there, especially with all the high-tech things that are going on. I think that there's three things you need to be thinking about when it comes to positioning yourself as the expert in your particular market, that target market we just talked about. The first thing is, is you should be publishing. You have so many opportunities to publish things that your particular prospects and clients can read, can listen to, and to watch. You can publish a book. You can publish an ebook. You can publish a white paper. You can publish articles. You can shoot videos. Is, is you, you have the ability to do a podcast. There's so many things that you can do to be able to get your message across and establish yourself as an expert. Establish yourself with somebody with credibility. The second thing you can do is to speak. Speak to associations, speak to target audiences where your target market, the meetings that they go to. Because how many times have you personally listened to a speaker and said to yourself, wow, she's really sharp, I need to talk to her. Or wow, he's got a great message, I need to make sure I have an appointment with that individual. And of course the absolute best way to position yourself is through referrals from centers of influence that have lots of influence in your particular target market. Now I want to say one more thing about the concept of publishing when it comes to you positioning yourself as the expert. Now this is going to apply not only to just disability insurance, but also your overall practice. Think about this. There are four of the largest companies in the world, the largest companies in the world that want to help you get your message across. Think about this for a second. The first company out there that is willing to help you is Amazon. You could take a, a you could write a book, you write an ebook, you could have that uh, Word document, you could upload it uh, on CreateSpace, which is owned by Amazon, and tomorrow you would have a book that's posted on Amazon with an author page, and one of the largest companies in the world will be promoting your book. And you have the ability, you know, to direct people to that site to show that you're a recognized expert in your particular field. Another company that's out there that will that wants to help you promote uh, yourself is Google. If you have a Google Plus account, you literally can have a meeting, you can have a webinar for free and, and app, uh, promote yourself, give value, add value to your niche market for free to, to thousands and thousands and thousands of people. That, that company, Google, also owns a company called YouTube. You have the ability to publish videos and YouTube will give you a channel and allow you to publish your message to the world. And then finally, there's another company out there many of you have heard of. It's called Apple. Apple wants you to do a podcast. They will give you a podcast page, and they will promote your message to the entire world. So if you um, want to be known in a particular target market, take advantage of not only you know, the publishing opportunities that are out there, but look for speaking engagements and make sure that you really do a good job of seeking out great centers of influence and, and asking them for referrals to get them to the people you want to get to so you can be in a position that you come in above the line of credibility and you're able to then get your message to that individual and hopefully make that person a client. The fifth thing that you can do is to make sure you concentrate on your top 20 clients. If you're, if you're trying to get started selling disability insurance and or you, know, you're, you want to get restarted selling disability insurance, Start with the people that love you the most. So here's what I would recommend that you do, is you just take a sheet that looks something like this, and on the left-hand column, you list your top 20 clients. When I say your top 20 clients, I'm obviously speaking about those clients that need to protect their income, not those that are at or near retirement. List their names and just start making the notes. Do they need DI, BOE, buy, sell, key person, and do they have it? Have I talked to them about it? My experience is, is when producers sit down there and, and put this list together, and this is the people that have traditionally not been, 
been big writers of disability insurance, that they can write somewhere between three applications in the next 45 days just by going to these top 20 clients and discussing their needs. So if you're looking for a starting point to jumpstart this concept of the $6 million producer, I can't think of a better place. Oh yeah, by the way, number one best client is you. Make sure that you have the proper amount of disability insurance, business overhead expense, if buy sell is applicable, if key person is applicable, make sure you're covered because that's a great place to get started selling one disability insurance application each and every week. Step number six is that income protection products needs to be part of every discussion. It needs to be part of every discovery meeting. When you're meeting with a prospect for the first time, you have to have some type of conversation regarding their need to protect their income. One of my favorite authors is Nick Murray, and a question that he asked goes something like this. Dave, do you know exactly what would happen to your family financially if you became disabled and could no longer work? What a great way to start that discussion. He's not talking about non-CAN, ONOC, residual COLA. What he's trying to do is understand what's in the brain of his particular prospect. The, the other discussion, make sure that you're talking about income protection as part of every financial recommendation, every plan. To steal another quote from Nick Murray, a plan that's not protected against death or disability is, not really, is really not a plan, but rather a bet, and no loving father or husband would want to risk a bet on his family's financial well-being. So every time that you're, you're recommending uh, a plan to somebody, make sure that income protection is part of that recommendation. And then finally, is over the course of the next year, every time you're doing an annual review with somebody, make sure that you talk to them about the importance of protecting their income. Hopefully, you have a phenomenal understanding of what they do or don't have, either through work or personally, and then what you're able to do is make recommendations based upon their current situation. So if we start making income protection products, income protection planning, part of every meeting that we have with people, just the inertia is going to cause you to write an incredible amount of applications in this particular space. The, the seventh step that you need to do is you need to be masterful in your conversations with people. You need to have great conversations. And what I mean by that is not that, that you can talk about non-CAN, ONOC, residual, COLA, future purchase option, but rather you're able to just have a meaningful conversation to understand where they are, where they want to go, and what the impact would have on themselves and their family if something bad were to happen to them. Because here's what I know. The people that were involved in an automobile accident today, the people who were rushed to the hospital because of some form of illness did not get up today saying, boy, what a great day for an auto accident, or what a great day for a stroke. Look, bad things happen to good people, and we want you need to make sure that your clients are protected in the event that something bad happens to them. And the best way to make sure that they do what you know is right is to have a great conversation, put it in their terms, and not try to push product and only talk about technical stuff. The great conversations will result in a huge amount of sales. Step number eight is look for multi-life opportunities. I talked a little bit about if you're going into a business where there's you know, lots of employees, you know, maybe what you can do is write two, three, four, or five applications in that particular business. Certainly those of you who have worked in the medical or dental marketplace, you're used to doing this. If you work in the attorney marketplace, maybe you're doing that too. But don't just go in and write the owner or just write one partner or one doctor. Look to be able to write several people in there. And what that does, I mean, that just takes your production to another level. The ninth thing uh, that you need to do is you need to have great partners. I believe that your number one job and number two job and number three job is see the people, see the people, see the people. And what you need is great partners to be able to assist you to make that happen. Well, the good news for you is, is you have a plus group partner that invited you to this webinar that can help you. They can help you with the marketing. They can help you keep you updated with all the product changes and how it's applicable to your particular clients. They can run the quotes for you. You can get them the applications and then they can shepherd the underwriting through the entire process. Find great partners that allow you to do what you do best, which I'm guessing is prospecting for new opportunities and having great conversations with your clients and your prospects. So take advantage of the power of the plus group and put them to work because I know these people and they will bust their butts to help you help your particular prospects and clients. 
And the last thing you can do is become a disability insurance expert. There are people in this country, unfortunately not enough of them, but hopefully over time we're going to see more of them created that are becoming what I call a broker's broker. And what their practice consists of is they go around their particular marketplace and they partner with agents or advisors who either can't or don't want to talk to their clients regarding disability insurance. And what they do is then those two agents work out a commission split. Think of it in these terms. When I started in the industry, no self-respecting life insurance agent sold group medical insurance. Is they farmed it out to somebody else who was the, the, the group medical insurance expert. And what tended to happen then is all of a sudden that group expert went from driving a beater to a beamer, and all of a sudden people got very, very interested in selling group medical insurance. Well, the reality is, is this. If, you, if it doesn't make sense for you to be selling disability insurance to your clients because of you, you're, you have an expertise somewhere else, you really don't like it, you don't have time to become the expert, seek out a broker broker. Go to your local plus group office and say, hey, look, I'm probably not going to spend the time to do this. Do you have somebody that would be a good partner for me that could talk to my clients, would not, we, we could have a great relationship and they would not try to poach on other coverages that I write in there and we could have a great synergy, a great partnership. We take care of my clients and we both make some money. Your plus group office can help you find that particular person. Or you might be on the other side of the fence. Maybe you want to be that broker broker. Well, go to your plus group offices and say, and raise your hand and say, I want to be a broker's broker. If you're finding agents that don't want to do this, let, help connect me with them so we can make sure that people are out there talking about the need to protect their income. I am so passionate about uh, the need uh, to, for people to have talk to talk to their clients and prospects regarding disability insurance. I'm so passionate in my belief that 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 so many people can write uh, one application a week that I created a podcast, and the name of my podcast is called uh, it's actually called the Six Million Six Million Dollar Producer, and the the message in that particular podcast is all about is sharing ideas, resources, and interviews with, with industry thought leaders on how we can help you sell one disability insurance application each and every week. Now again, if, if one a week is, this isn't in your world, whatever your number is, is the right number for you. I can't tell you what that number is, but this podcast is, is dedicated to helping you uh, write more disability insurance. So um, we're going we're gonna, to uh, pause here in just a second for questions that, that might have come up because I know we want to keep this around 30, 35 minutes. If for some reason uh, you want some more information, you can check out my website, uh, www.thedicoach.net. If you would like to email me something that wouldn't uh, offline, please feel free to at chris at thedicoach.net. And again, if you want a copy of the slides or you want a copy of the, of the report, 21 questions you should ask about disability insurance, just text your email to 206-535-1809. And with that, Tracy, I uh, just want to see if there are any questions that we can answer before these people go out there and conquer the disability insurance world today. <laughs> okay. Um, if there are any questions, as mentioned, please go to the question pane on your control panel and type them in. And we had a couple comments. Um, the that was a great presentation, and people wanted to know alternate ways, <clears throat> excuse me, to get the presentation. And like I said, besides texting your email to the number Chris provided, again, everybody that's on this within 24 hours will receive an email with a, a link, <clears throat> which has all the audio as well as the presentation. And again, it will be on the Plus Group website at www.plusgroupus.com. So again, if you have any questions, um, everyone's like, Chris is great. Everyone's <laughs> getting lots of those comments. Um, you know, Tracy, I want you to know I paid a lot of people a lot of money to type that in. <laughs> so thank you. So for thank you for making sure that that money was well spent. There you go. Um, because other than that, it looks like um, I don't see any questions, but just uh, compliments on what a great presentation it was. So. Well, it Again, what, what, one of the things that I know with, with webinars, sometimes the, the questions uh, come up after uh, you, know, you think about it for a while. Again, please don't hesitate to reach out to me via email. Just shoot me an email at chris at the dicoach.net, and I can help you in any way, shape, or form, and or you think of a question uh, as you're driving down the road today. Yeah. Oh, there is one just came in. Uh, what do you think about approach strategies? 
approach strategies, and I'm going to um, assume that we're talking about prospecting approaches. Um, and if, if I'm saying that, if I'm, if I'm making the correct assumption, then I think it goes back to what I said before is how we use publishing, speaking, and referrals to get us in front of people. Yeah, he said, I'm sorry, I'm just going to, he said, yeah, door-to-door, -door, mail, email, stuff like that. So. Yeah, and, and, and I think that what we what we should do is, um, you know, it's, it's kind of, we use, and Tracy and I, you've talked to us, and I have talked to us before, we need to combine high-tech with high-touch. Let's take advantage of all the high-tech tools that are out there, and there's so many of them, you know, that fall under that vague umbrella called social media. But at the end of the day, what, it, what it's going to take for most people to be successful is what I call that hand-to-hand -hand combat. And that's when we're looking at somebody eyeball to eyeball having a great discussion about the importance of protecting their income. So, so long-winded answer to say, let's use high tech to get us to the high touch. Um, somebody said you mentioned a podcast. Is that information on your website? Yes, it is. There's a link on my website, and they can subscribe it, or you can watch, listen to it, or if they want to subscribe, that way they get every single episode. Somebody wrote, I'm an occasional LTD producer, but will would like to sell more. So that's uh, some positive feedback. And, and, and I, Tracy, can I make a comment on that? Absolutely. Is, is that, if, and there's so many people out there, you know, who, are, who fit that description. And one of the great things about the Plus Group is if you sit down and, and ring them up and say, let's go have a cup of coffee so you can tell me where the opportunities lie right here in XYZ, wherever you guys happen to live. I promise you that, that that plus group partner will be there and will give his or her heart and soul to help you do the right things by, by your practice and by your client. So don't sit back and just wait for the phone to ring, people. Ring up your plus group office and say, hey, let's go grab a cup of coffee or whatever your beverage of choice is and have that conversation so you guys can help each other. Right. So again, um, like people keep asking me about the presentation. It will be, you have three options basically. Text me your email to 206-535-1809. You will also receive an email tomorrow. Um, it usually takes 24 hours to get that. It's an actual link that you open up, and you'll see the actual PowerPoint and hear Chris's voice. And thirdly, it will be on the Plus Group website at www.plusgroupus.com, and I hope to get that up there by end of day today. So that seems to be what most people, let me just look and see if I've missed anything. And like I said, so many positives. Everyone just said it was great, and it was. Um, again, if you have any questions, um, again, you can go directly to Chris, go to your local Plus Group office, or you can contact me, Tracy, at plusgroupus.com, and I will make sure if any questions are answered, like Chris said, as, you're, as you may digest all this and uh, have some questions later. So Tracy, I, Tracy, I want to thank you because I know we tried to get everybody out of here in about 35 minutes. Yeah. So I want to thank everybody for putting up with my fast talking. You could probably tell that I'm pretty excited about this, but as important, I wanted to to to, to plant a lot of seeds in a very short uh, short amount of time, so you can you know kind of water those seeds so you can do the right thing again by your by your practice and by your clients. So Tracy, again, thank you for the I'm opportunity to talk to you. Another question. Yes, <laughs> Someone just asked, how do you get the auto respond to work on your text? Send me an email and I'll tell them. Okay. That's um, an offline deal, but I'm happy to share that information. Okay. So again, you can contact Chris at the dicoach.net. Um, so again, and any other questions you think of, um, if you don't remember Chris's email, just send it to me. Everyone should have uh, my email address as well, or your local Plus Group office. So again, Chris, thank you for your time today. Um, thanks to all of you for joining us. And please check out our website at www.plusgroupus or contact your local Plus Group office for more information about this webinar as well as future webinars. Again, thank you, Chris, and thank you, everybody, for your time, and have a fabulous day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye.